Two eight five one, turn right heading one eight zero. Hey everyone, welcome back to DJ's Aviation. A big thanks to Matt for helping me with this video. On the 9th of February 1969, American company Boeing unveiled to the world what was previously thought to be the future of aviation. This came in the form of the iconic Boeing 747. The aircraft was the world's first double-decker plane, but was soon overtaken by the larger Airbus A380. The Airbus A380 is a full-length, dual-story aircraft with a floor space of over 500 metres squared. In a standard 3-4 to four class layout, the A380 can seat around 525 seats approximately. However, if the airline did decide to equip the aircraft with only economy class, they could fit over 800 people in the plane. However, this has and likely will never be done due to the logistics of implementing an all economy layout. Now it's time to look at the past. Let's go back to the start of the A380, when the A380 was just a concept. Airbus planned to build what would have been the world's largest aircraft in width-wise. This was because they originally planned to put two A340-600 cabins next to each other making the cabin over 10 metres wide and allowing airlines to put 15 seats per row. As amazing as this concept aircraft would have been seeing flying today, many issues were uncovered like thrust and weight distribution as well as actually filling such a large aircraft, and so Airbus settled with the double-decker design seen today. Airbus announced the A380 to the public in December 2000 and started production in January 2001 with 50 firm orders from six carriers. At the time, Airbus also accepted orders for two other variants of the A380 which never went ahead. They were the A380 Freighter, more commonly referred to as the A380F, and the A380 Stretch. If built, the A380F would have actually beaten the 7478F in both range and capacity by around 7%, although it would have come with the disadvantage of higher operating costs. The A380 Stretch, also known as the A380-200 or A380-900, would have seated 650 to 656 passengers over the A380's average 500 passengers. However, both designs were completely scrapped in 2015, and the A380 Stretch designs were kind of converted into an A380-NEO. The NEO variant was eventually again redesigned. Fast forward four years to 2005, and the first A380, registered F-WWOW, made its maiden flight on the 27th of April in Toulouse. Powered by four Rolls-Royce Trent 900 engines, the flight lasted for three hours and 54 minutes. The next year, the rollout of the A380 hit one of its first major hurdles. The wing of the A380 failed the wing strength test 145% out of 150%, and Airbus was sent back to the drawing board to redesign the failing part. Luckily, they did this, and by the end of the year, the A380 had received FAA and EASA certifications. With tests passed and the A380 certified, the cogs started to turn as A380 production commenced. The next year, the first A380 was delivered to launch customer Singapore Airlines, registered as 9V-SKVA. It arrived on October 15, 2007, and 10 days later, it took to the skies on its first passenger flight from Singapore to Sydney. The flight was considered a success and Airbus went full steam ahead on production. With production going ahead, by the end of 2008, Airbus had delivered 13 A380s. In February of 2009, the A380 flew its one millionth passenger and it only got better from there. By the end of the year, 23 A380s had indeed been delivered and airlines had ordered 202 of the new A380s. Four years later, on the 14th of March 2013, Airbus delivered its 100th A380 to Malaysia Airlines. Another four years passed, and that brings us to 2018. 2018 was a tough year for the A380, and also saw Airbus head to China to try and get orders. Unfortunately, both of these attempts failed, and the year went on to have a and and Emirates order only a few more aircraft. And the year went on to see not many orders accumulate for the type. And so that brings us to the present. In 2019, we have seen both Emirates change orders and British Airways lose interest in adding more A380s. With Emirates converting some of their A380 orders into orders for the A330-900s and A350-900s, and also British Airways ruling out the option to place new orders, sadly Airbus announced the shutdown of the A380 program, and this will now see production come to a close in 2021, after the last 16 A380s are delivered to Emirates and ANA. Emirates currently have 14 aircraft on order, and ANA is waiting for its final A380 to be delivered. 
Currently, there are 233 A380s in service, operated by 15 carriers. It will likely still be many years before the last A380 is retired, with airlines needing to break even on the money they spent. Unfortunately, though, it could be that once airlines break even, they may send the A380s to the graveyard as a result of the higher-than-ever operating costs in fuel, fees and services of the A380, compared to newer, more efficient aircraft like the A350 and 787. There is no doubt that the A380 is an expensive aircraft to buy and also operate, but it is still an icon of the aviation industry and is an incredible aircraft to look at. Thank you very much for watching another one of my videos and I do appreciate your support all over the channel and in recent videos. I do very much look forward to you all joining me in the next one. Oh, well,